Hi everybody, how's it going today? Thanks for watching another video. I'm in the office here at the farm. Uh, it's uh, Friday evening. Taryn just got home from work. She's uh, working this weekend at the hospital in town. Just, uh, Fridays are a dry off day for us and then also pen movement. So we're drying off cows. They're going from uh, our late lactation pen to our far off dry cow pen. And then we're, we move cows uh, from our high production pens into the late lactation pens, cows that are uh, uh, typically around 195 plus days pregnant. And then we also move cows from our fresh pen, our fresh pens, uh, out to our high lactation pens today. And uh, what I wanted to talk about this video was uh, we've got, we're selling some uh, cows here this Sunday, some cow cows or some cows uh, that we don't necessarily want to keep on the farm. and. Typically on Fridays, uh, the guys will write down a list of a uh, handful of cows that they'd like to uh, sell. And then uh, I'll make the rest of the list based on some things that I'm looking at on the computer. So I'll be shipping uh, 18 cows here this Sunday and I think there might be a heifer that's, uh, that we haven't been able to get pregnant in our heifer barn. I'll uh, look through that here. I'm going to enter all this uh, information in the pen movements and the dry offs first. And then uh, we'll look at some of these cows that our guys wrote down. I like to always double check them, uh, just to make sure that number wasn't written down wrong, make sure these cows are cows that uh, we do want to have leave the farm here. And then uh, I'll try to look through some uh, do not breed cows, possibly some low producing cows, and uh, some cows that have uh, quality issues, some high somatic cell count cows to uh, fill out the rest of the list. So uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, show you guys that, talk about that. and. Uh, Typically, I'll uh, go out to the barn if I have questions about some of these cows if, uh, and uh, go look at them myself. And because uh, it's Friday today, tomorrow, if I do have questions, I'll talk with the herd guys tomorrow to see if there's any cows that I do have questions about. And usually, there's one or two that, uh, looking at their records on the computer, I don't necessarily think they uh, need to go. I'm going to enter this information here first and then uh, uh, start filling out this list here of cows that I'd like to uh, ship on Sunday. So I've got a list of cows put together here. There are a couple cows that I uh, want to look at. Probably not going to do that tonight. I'll do that tomorrow morning and uh, talk to our herd guys about uh, these two that I have questions on. But just thought I'd kind of go through the list here and uh, talk about some of these cows. Uh, quite a few of them are just low producing cows that I uh, want to get out of the herd. But uh, the first few, so the first one is uh, it's a heifer actually, first lactation cow. Uh, early in uh, lactation but she's uh, been to the hoof trimmer a couple times now the hoof trimmer uh, said that she uh, doesn't have a hoof issue she just has uh, bad feet so she's not able to get around uh, like we uh, think she should so she's going to uh, go the second cow is actually the oldest cow on the farm so kind of sad to see her on the list here but uh, her guys think that she's uh, developing pneumonia or is, uh, starting to uh, develop pneumonia. So I, I do want to look at her tomorrow because uh, she's a little over 10 years old. I'd hate to see her go, but if she is uh, starting to develop pneumonia at her age, I think that's definitely uh, the best uh, choice for her. We don't want to get her to the point where she needs treatment uh, at her age. That's likely not going to end up uh, uh, very good for her. Uh, is her first case of pneumonia and actually looking back through her records this cow has been uh, pretty spotless for us in the 10 years that she's been on our farm she's never been treated for anything so I do want to take a look at her tomorrow then uh, right away you guys can see the oldest cow on our farm before she uh, she uh, leaves our farm here and then uh, several low low milk production cows so these would be cows uh, that are maybe around uh, I think most of these were like 80 to 120 days in milk uh, milk production's around uh, 60 pounds, so uh, really to a point where it doesn't really make sense to breed them and their milk production is low enough already that she can uh, go on the truck. Uh, one cow that's uh, had milk quality issues, so she's been treated for mastitis a few times and the last couple tests her somatic cell count was uh, over 500, so uh, she's going to go on Sunday. And then uh, I think I might have mentioned this when I started, but there, we do have some uh, do not breed cows. So those would be uh, cows that we're not breeding uh, for, could be for several reasons. Uh, sometimes we have uh, older cows, uh, maybe their udders aren't very good anymore. Um, 
maybe they're just uh, yeah, not very good looking cows anymore. Uh, so we'll mark them as do not breed cows. Uh, maybe they have repro issues. Uh, we're not able to get them uh, pregnant or they've been serviced. They've been bred uh, four or five times. They're still open cows. Those would be uh, become do not breed cows. Uh, also one heifer on here that uh, has been bred three times, but she's uh, over 500 days old already. So she's getting to the point where she's um, she's already getting too fat. So we weren't we're not breeding her anymore. She is a do not breed cow. So what what we do with those cows is uh, they will stay on our farm. And uh, other than that heifer, obviously is not milking. But all these cows that are do not breed cows, we will continue to milk them until their milk production drops to a certain point, and then uh, we will sell them. So all the going through the do not breed list here. What I'm looking at is uh, milk production, but I'm also looking at milk quality. So their somatic cell count, what it's been the last couple tests. And um, this week here for this truckload, all cows that are under uh, 65 pounds of milk, they're uh, going to be uh, on this truck here. And then there were a few cows that had milk quality issues now, three tests in a row. So uh, they're also going on the truck because they have uh, might might not have uh, mastitis or not showing mastitis, but they definitely have some uh, milk quality issues going on. If it's sometimes if it's one test, maybe uh, was an uh, inaccurate test or a fluke, but three tests in a row that uh, tells me that there is something going on with that cow. So those were the those were all the cows. A lot of the majority of them fell under the low milk production. Do not breed cows. Those were those accounted for one, two, three, four, five over just about 10 cows that were either low producing cows that are yeah around 100 days of milk like I said or do not breed cows that are under 65 pounds in milk um, they uh, will be going on the truck here this Sunday so typically we send cows uh, twice a month sometimes three times a month it kind of depends on how many cows are calving uh, we're trying to stick around 1600 milking cows uh, 1800 cows total on the farm so I kind of use that and then uh, also how many cows our guys would have or would like to ship sometimes they'll let me know we've got some uh, cows that we'd like to uh, ship then we'll uh, contact the person that purchases these cows from us and uh, they'll uh, come pick them up but it's uh, almost always on Sunday mornings uh, work that day works good for us and that works good for the person that's purchasing these cows so uh, that's what it's gonna be this Sunday here and uh, Cull, cull prices have been uh, pretty good here. Uh, meat prices are high. Uh, these cows are, have been bringing quite a bit of money for us. Milk prices are low, so it makes sense for us to ship some of these uh, lower producing cows. Uh, they have to, especially these do not breed cows, they will end up leaving our farm at some point anyways. So it uh, yeah, makes sense to uh, put them on the truck. And there was one, they, uh, the guys rode down a cow, 8258. They rode her down as low milk production, but a week ago we had uh, they were out here for testing or 10 days now I suppose and she produced 80 pounds at test day so I'm I and the previous test was uh, in the 90s I believe if I remember right so I do want to go look at her uh, and ask them uh, about her because if I don't really want to sh if she's producing 80 pounds she doesn't need to go quite yet but it could be that in the last week or so that she's dropped significantly in milk uh, find that unlikely but definitely possible so i do want to check uh, on her we'll do that in the morning as well uh yeah check those two cows and uh, i'll take you take you guys with me uh maybe I'll show you a few more of these cows that will be leaving our farm a lot of times these low producing cows and do not breed cows they uh, also become quite fat just because their milk production is uh, not very high but they're still eating a uh, high producing cow ration so uh, those cows uh, they'll they bring some good money because they're good size, but we don't want them hanging around too long because fat cows are, uh, they're no good. Especially if they're not, do not breed cows. They, they might as well go because by the time they, uh, by the time they are pregnant and uh, get to dry off, they're going to be way too fat and then they're going to have issues calving the next lactation and uh, just become problem cows at that point. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, We'll uh, catch back up with you guys tomorrow. We'll look at these uh, couple of these cows, and uh, I'd like to look at this uh, 3883 myself because she is uh, she's actually uh, 
10 years and two weeks old. So that's a pretty old cow. Um, yeah, I hate to see her go because she has been a good cow for us, but uh, definitely I uh, think will we'll be a good, uh, good decision to uh, send her on Sunday if she is uh, starting to develop pneumonia because pneumonia is not, not good for, cat, for any cattle, but especially a 10-year-old cow. I don't know if she'd uh, recover from uh, pneumonia, especially since we're in the middle of summer, hot temperatures. That's uh, not a good recipe, uh, not a good time for a cow to get pneumonia for sure. So uh, yeah, we'll catch back up with you guys tomorrow here, look at some of these cows. It's the next day here. We're just gonna look up these uh, two cows. I did talk to uh, Victor, one of our herds guys here this morning about these cows. And uh, the one, the really old cow, I guess she's been kind of dealing with a little bit of respiratory since she uh, had her calf, which is about uh, 10, 14 days ago it looked like. I'm gonna go look at her myself, but I think we are gonna send her on the truck uh, Sunday, tomorrow morning. And this other cow, this is her right here, 8258. So she's a do not breed, and she uh, she actually aborted, uh, but the calf is still inside of her. She has a, a mummy, dead, dead fetus inside of her. So they were thinking, uh, sell her, get rid of her before that's going to cause any problems. Overall, not a bad looking cow. Hey girl. I'm gonna leave it up to our guys what they wanted to do with her. She, she will be sold at some point, uh, just a matter of when. So according to the last uh, milk test day here, uh, 10 days ago, she produced 80 pounds. So she doesn't necessarily need to go quite yet. Still enough milk um, that she can uh, stick around for a while, but don't wanna have that uh, dead fetus inside of her cause any health issues with her either. So we'll see, I, I did put her on the list as a 19th cow. Usually what I'll do is I'll add an extra cow in case they wanna change one out or they would, yeah, don't want to send a specific cow. So I was going to leave it up to them and they'll change out the 18th cow for the for that cow and leave uh, the 18th one here. Not sure what happened here, but lost audio on this one clip here on this video. Just uh, going over to that oldest cow on her farm, 3883. She's She was in the fresh pen here. They had moved her into this, back into this pen which uh, typically houses cows for a day or two after calving just to uh, keep her a little bit more comfortable uh, this, this cow is a little over 10 years old she's uh, currently she's on her ninth lactation so overall the cow looks uh, pretty good for having uh, nine calves utter still in pretty good shape but did look like she was breathing a little bit heavy so I think it was uh, the right decision to uh, sell her on Sunday not sure what else I uh, plan to talk about or what I did talk about here in the rest of this clip. So I think we'll just uh, cut the rest of this and get back to the rest of the video. Come on, girl. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, girls. Hey. Come on. Yep. Yep. Come on. No, 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 no go. You bring these. Yep. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, Swiss. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, girls. Hey. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, girls. Hey. Come on. Hey. Come on, girls. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come yeah. on, girls. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on, girls.
It's always uh, seems like a challenge to get the first one loaded, but then once they start going on, they just follow each other on typically. Loaded pretty quick there. So he's uh, gonna be heading back to the to the ranch. So these cows, they uh, or these guys, they purchase cows from uh, dairy farms, uh, several dairy farms, and then they'll sort them out, grade them, and then they send cows to uh, several different plants across the Midwest. Uh, not sure where these cows are going to end up, but they're going to be uh, made into uh, hamburgers and steaks somewhere, as well as uh, several other products. Kind of uh, incredible to think about how many people these cows have fed and will feed. Uh, if you uh, think about all the milk that they've produced, what the meat that they're going to produce now, and the byproducts that are made from their their hair, their their uh, coats. Their hooves. Uh, a lot of a lot of different products are made from uh, cows after they end up at the slaughter plant. But uh, the cow is uh, the milking cow, the dairy cow. She's uh, an incredible animal, if you ask me. Feeds a lot of people, takes care of a lot of people, and uh, they do it very sustainably. They eat a lot of feed that we uh, can't consume ourselves, and they turn that into meat and milk. So. It's sad to watch these cows leave, but I have a lot of respect for, for our cows and for all cows because they are uh, able to pr provide so much for us. So we uh, yeah, try to take care of them as best as possible when they're on our farm and try to show them that respect. And uh, then they, they take care of us in the end. I think I'll uh, end this video here. I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, yeah, questions, comments post them down below and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.